Hi, I'm going to be explaining in this video how to load film into a 35mm camera. Now, if you're like me and you have years and years of experience with photography, if it's been a hobby of yours for decades and decades, you're probably going to find this video very unnecessary. The purpose of this video is to explain to people how to load film into a camera. People who are very new to photography. Maybe a young person who has never picked up a 35mm film camera in their life and it's their first time and they're not exactly sure how to load film into that camera. This video is for those people. So again, for those of you who might find this video very uh, boring and very basic, you don't have to watch it. This is intended for absolute beginners who have never used a film camera before. So, I'm going to show you step by step all the things that you should do when you load film into a 35mm camera. Okay, so to begin, we see here on the left a classic analog 35mm camera. This is a Konica Autoreflex T4 and this was released in the late 70s and it's one of my favorite uh, SLR cameras. On the right we see a roll of Ilford HP5 black and white film and this is one of my favorite black and white films. So, to begin, the first thing we have to do is open the back door on the back of the camera and you can see there it is. Now for a lot of these old cameras there are basically two ways of opening the back door and it varies from camera to camera. In some cameras when I lift up on the film rewind lever that will pop open the back door. But with the Auto Reflex T4 you see there is a little tab right down there on the bottom and when I pull down on that tab the back door opens. So there we go. We open the back door like that and we're ready to put in the roll of film. So now I'm going to take my roll of film and I'm going to put it on this side. You see there's a like a little groove here that's about the same size as the canister of film. I'm just going to drop it in there and you'll see there's a piece of film sticking out here. I'm going to talk more about that in a moment. But for now, I'm just going to take my roll of film and just put it in this little chamber. And I want to make sure, you see there's a little hole on the bottom of the canister of the film uh, with a couple of tabs inside the hole. I want that to engage with this piece right here that is on the bottom of the rewind lever. So I'm going to take the canister of film and put it in just like that. You can see, I'm just going to show you in advance, up here there's a post and this is the advance lever. This is the lever that pulls the, f that advances the film. After you take each photo you're going to move that lever forward and advance the film to the next shot. And you can see that that lever is, is attached to this post right here and there's a little slot in the post. You see it? I'm going to stick the end of the film into that slot. So I'm going to gently take the film and pull it out of the canister. Now we don't want to pull out too much. We're just going to pull out enough so that I can stick the end of the film into that slot. Just like that. So you see I got the end of the film sticking into the slot right there. Alright, so what I'm going to do now, I'm going to take the advance lever and move it forward and you can see it's pulling the film forward just like that now something very 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 important you want to make sure you see there are some teeth on one of the poles here that helps to advance the film there are some teeth and you want to be absolutely sure that the teeth are engaged in the sprocket holes on the edge of the film if they're not your film may not advance and you may think that you're shooting the film, the film is not actually advancing and you take it out of the camera and you realize all that time that the film has never advanced. Very, very critical. So I make sure that the tabs are engaged in the holes on the film like that. I close the door very gently until I hear it snap. Now up here, you see the film counter. There's a little window 
and you're going to notice that as I turn the lever that that little the numbers are going to advance so as I mentioned you'll notice in the window you'll see a little red S which stands for start telling us that we're at the start of the film as I mentioned I'm going to advance the lever you might have to push the shutter release button first just like so and then we're going to advance the film like this you might have to do it a couple of times okay and I'm going to stop right there some people would keep going and make sure that the the little tab lines up with the number one I'm just going to start right there okay and we can see it's about ready to take the shot just before number one so we're pretty much ready to go the film has been loaded and we're pretty much ready to take photos but there's a couple of things I'm going to mention just to make sure that you have the most success while you're taking your photos okay so I'm just going to talk briefly about some of the controls on the top of the camera just so you know and again not all cameras are the same they all vary to some degree but overall many of the controls on these old 35 millimeter cameras are the same starting here on the left as I mentioned this is the rewind lever when you get to the end of the film if your film has 24 exposures or 36 exposures you'll notice you'll get to the end of the film and it just stops and you can't advance the film anymore because you've come to the end and as I mentioned before in the counter window it will tell you it will probably show 24 or 25 if it's a 24 exposure film or 36 if it's a 36 exposure and you know you've reached the end of the film when you see that when you are finished on the bottom of the camera there's usually a little button you can push that will release the film so that you can rewind it so I basically push that button and while I'm pushing that button I can rewind the film so I just take the lever like that and rewind the film as I'm holding the button on the bottom and you'll notice as you're rewinding there's going to be some tension but when you finish rewinding suddenly the tension stops you can feel it and the more you do that the more you become used to it and the more you become comfortable with it also on the top of the camera on the top of the t4 we have a little button for battery check so I can basically push that button and see the little red light comes on and that tells me that the battery still has some life in it I have what's called a hot shoe for my flash if I want to attach a flash I have my shutter speed dial and this tells me the speed at which the shutter opens now for those of you brand new for to photography the lower the number the slower the speed the higher the number the faster the speed as a general rule of thumb if I'm outside on a bright nice sunny day you're probably going to put it at 125 or 250 that would be good settings for outside but if you're in a darker situation you would probably want 60 or 30 or maybe even lower and for that to determine that you'd probably want to use a light meter and I'm going to talk more about light meters in a separate video but just so you know that's for your shutter speed and here within the shutter speed dial there's another little window you see it up here that's for setting the ISO of the film this is the sensitivity of the film and you'll notice on every film there's a number whether it be a hundred two hundred four hundred eight hundred we want to set the ISO to the film that we put in the camera so the film that I put in the camera is Ilford HP 5 which is a 400 speed film so I'm going to lift this and move it to 400 just like so and I, as I mentioned before we have the film advance lever and the shutter release so I push this silver button to when I'm ready to take the photo so basically just I look through the viewfinder I adjust my focus here on the lens and also this is my f-stop setting up here and basically f-stop is like the the sort of iris of the lens just it works very similar to the pupil of the eye and again if I look at the numbers a higher number we want to use that for a bright setting so on a bright sunny day we're going to want to put that number to 16 or 22 
In a lower light situation, I'm going to want to move it down maybe to 5.8 or 3.5. So that's my little rundown about how to load film into a 35 millimeter single lens reflex camera. The process is a little bit different depending on the camera, but overall it's roughly the same for most old 35 millimeter film cameras. All of the steps that I just showed you are pretty much applicable to most old vintage cameras. If you have any questions, please ask. You can leave a question in the comments section. I, I would be happy to answer any questions you have. Please subscribe to the channel. I post new tech reviews every week. So if you want to see more videos like this, please subscribe, leave a comment, give us a thumbs up. It would be greatly appreciated. Thank you and we'll see you again next time. Take care, bye-bye. <laughs>